Right, so 7.2, this is usually the unit that I end everything with. Um, there's really no trig in this at all. It is in the book that we use for trig, but the nice thing is it's a pretty easy topic uh, and it fits well into three days. So I'm, I'm doing it this week and we'll save the last topic, which is vectors, for next academic week. That we need four days. There are four days in this topic. So let's take a look at something like this. Oops. Uh, let's say 2 to the x equals 60. So that's called an exponential equation because it has a variable in the exponent. Now it's asking you 2 to what power would give you 16. Can anybody tell me 2, two to what power would give you 16? Yeah? 4. four. Yeah. 2 to the 4th power equals 16. Now, as long as this number is a power of that number, well then it's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, so if I put a number here like 8, the answer would be 3. Uh, the problem is if I gave you something like this, I, mean, I didn't really change anything about the equation significant. I just made 16, 15. That's all I did. Well, we know it's not 3, because if I raise 2 to the third power, what does that give me? About uh, 3? What does that give me? Yeah, 2 to the third power gives me 8. And Dominic, what's 2 to the fourth power? 16. Well, that's too big. So 2 to the third is too small. 2 to the fourth is too big. So the answer for x is somewhere in between, between 3 and 4. And that's what we're going to look at how, how we figure out. Let's take a look. So what I gave you guys from the first page there, that was an example of an exponential, technically that was an exponential equation. An exponential expression doesn't have an equal sign. Those are exponential expressions. Once you put an equal sign in there, now it becomes an exponential equation. But whether you have an equation or an expression, you've got to have something that has a variable in the exponent. That's what makes it exponential. And that also makes it the kind of problem you won't do in Algebra You won't spend a lot of time on in Algebra 1, maybe at the very end. Because um, we don't deal with variables in the exponents a lot at the beginning of Algebra. So to solve any type of equation that has uh, an exponent in, or a variable in the exponent, uh, we're going to use what's called a logarithm. Uh, does anybody remember studying anything about logarithms in Algebra 2? A little bit, maybe? So logarithms is something you might, might talk about at some point. And I'm going to show you guys how to change between two different formats. One format we're going to call exponential, the other one we're going to call log. And we're going to look at how do you change between each one. So the formula I'm going to give you in this box, it works both ways. Convert to exponential or to convert to logarithms. And the idea of the formula, it's not really calculating anything. It's more moving things around. So we just have to know what, what kind of gets moved where. So on the left, this is exponential form. And on the right is log. Well, first of all, the way you can tell something is log form it has the word log. So that's log. So let's start with this. There's a name for the thing that's a little bit lower than the exponent. Anybody remember what you call that? It begins with a B. The thing that's a little bit lower than in the exponent. Yeah? It's called the base. So if you have an exponential problem like this, we call 3 the base. 
It's the base because it's lower. Well, this is also called a base. When we learn how to pronounce that right hand side, that A is written a little bit lower than everything else. So if you had lined paper, it would look like this. The log and the X would be right kind of on the line, and the A would be underneath it. Right, so since the A is lower, that's called the base. It's called the base here. So the base there turns into the base on your logarithm. All right, the next thing. Now, what do we call the, the thing that's higher? Like in this case, it's a 5. That's my... That's my exponent. Well, one thing we always want to remember is logs equal the exponent. That's important. Logarithms always equal an exponent. That, that's what they're used to figure out. So this is an exponent because it's equal to a logarithm. So logarithms always equal the exponent. Right. And there's only one thing left. This. Okay. That's called an argument. The argument, and we've done a lot with arguments, like if you take the sine of 20 degrees, 20 degrees is called the argument. It's the thing that you're plugging into your formula. Well, Log is just like sine or cosine or tangent. It's another, it's another function. And this is called the argument. And the way we can remember where the argument goes is if you argue with somebody all the time, or you argue with everybody all the time, people probably aren't going to want to be around you. Right? You're going to annoy them. So the argument ends up all by itself on the other side. So whatever is all by itself and not around anything else, it annoyed everybody, it argued with everybody, that's called the argument. So the argument ends up alone on the other side. All right, so now how do we, how do you read what's on the right? Well, what's on the left, that's just x equals a to the left. Right? Most people read that over. But that's how you pronounce what's on the right. Say y equals, and you, you read it left to right. You just have to pronounce each thing correctly. y equals log base a of x. That's how you say it. That would be pronounced log base 3 of 2. So what the base does is it changes the kind of logarithm that you do. It's kind of like if you did this. What, what does this 3 mean? Yeah? Cube. cube, right? It's cube root. It's cube root. So you put a 3 there, that tells you the kind of root that you're looking for. It's a cube root. Versus what if I did something like this? That's a fourth root. So the number that you put here changes the kind of root you want. It's the same thing with a logarithm. The base that you put there changes the kind of logarithm that you want. But it's still a logarithm, just a different type. Just like this is still a root, just a different type. All right, so let's try changing something that is in log form into exponential. So remember what exponential looks like. Something by itself, something there, and something there. That's what your final answer should look like. You just have to figure out what three things go in those boxes. Okay, let's start with our, um, with our base. Um, Jackson, what's my base on that log? Three. Three is my base. The base on the logarithm is going to become the base on the exponential. So the three 
It's going to go right there. Now, Dominic, I wrote this kind of off to the left, but I said logarithms always equal what kind of number? Yeah. Logarithms always equal exponents. Logarithm equals exponent. So what's my exponent in this case? Y. And the only thing, well, the only spot left is something that's going to go all by itself on the other side. Then you want to remember what what do we call uh, the x? The argument. It's the argument, right? And because it argues with everybody, it ends up all by itself on the other side. And that's that's the final answer. I usually don't put boxes around it, but that's how you do it. Now, there's nothing you can really do to solve that. Uh, in order to solve that, like you'd have to know what y is. Like if y was 2, then I could do 3 to the second power and get an answer of 9. But without knowing y, I can't really go any further. So any question on changing from log to exponential? Let's try another one. Uh, Alex, can you tell me first of all just how you would how you would read that? Um, y equals log. Yep. Five. Log. Um, log base five. Base five. X. Of x. Y equals log base five of x. And he basically just said it. Uh, but Tony, what what's my base there? So 5 is going to be my base. Now I need to put an exponent. Uh, Cameron, logarithm always equals what kind of number? Exponent. Logarithm always equals the exponent. So y is your exponent. And the only thing I have left to put on the other side, Sam? Is x. Is x. That's the argument. And it ends up by itself. That's it. So some of these problems you'll get, what's yours? You'll get a numerical answer, some you won't. That, that one you don't. Any question on that? Okay. Oh, let's try it the other way. So now I want to take something that's already in exponential form, and I want to change it to log. Well, what do you think? Um, the very first thing you need to do is, if you're going to write something in log form, what, what would have to be there that tells somebody it's log form? Log? Yeah, you need the word log. So we're going to start with that. And now we've got three things we have to figure out. Let's start with the number that's lower. That's my base. Fiorello, what do you think my base is going to be on my logarithm? 1.2. 1 1.2, because that was the base when it was an exponential. It's lower than 3. That makes it the base. So there's my base. And one, what do we keep saying about logarithms? Logarithms equal what kind of number? Equals an exponent. Do you see what my exponent was originally? 3. 3, yep, good. Logarithm equals the exponent. And the only thing we have left is the argument. And we know where to look for that, because it's always by itself. Um, Ryan, well, what's going to be my um, my argument? M. M. There you go. So that's an example of the reverse of what we just did. Any question on that? Try another one. So this is e to the b equals 9. And same direction. You're going to change to log. Jenna, what's my first thing I want to write down if I'm changing something to log? 
Without this, you wouldn't know it's a log. The word law. Yep. Let's write the log part. Now I need my base. I mean, you can do it in any order you want, but I usually use the base first. Now, user, what's my base? E. E is what was lower, so we call that the base. That's going to be my base. Um, Tyler, logarithm always equals what kind of thing? Always equals the exponent. And what was my exponent here? B. So we have B. The only thing I have left to fill in is the argument. Uh, and Dominic, what's my argument? Nine. Nine. So it was all by itself on the left side. Well, on the right, right side. There you go. Question on it? Try one more of those, and then we'll do something different. Okay. 8 to the 4th equals 24. Changing it to log. So, Keanu, what's the first thing I'm going to write down? Without this, we wouldn't know that it's a log. Yep, I'm going to start by writing the word log. Log. And Austin, what's going to be, what do we call the number that's lower here? The base. The base. And what was my base in the original problem? Four. Four is an exponent. A. A. A is my base. And that answers the next question. What kind of, what kind of thing does the logarithm always equal the exponent? So, 4 is my exponent. And Alex, uh, the thing that's going to go right here we call argument. argument. And we know something is the argument because it's all by itself. Um, what was the argument? 24. I don't know. So that's changing exponential to log. Alright, let's try try one more. Go back the other way again. So now this is changing to exponential. It says log base e of b equals negative three. Alright, uh, how about Curtis? Yeah, what's my base here? E. So if e is my base. That means I need to put a number on it. That's an exponent. Um, so, Juan, what's my exponent? Uh, tell me, sorry. Uh, negative three. Negative three. And Curtis, were you going to tell me what goes on the other side? Yeah, B. That's the argument, and it ends up by itself. So, E to the negative three equals B. Any question on that? Now, I have, a, I have a question. What What is that? What is it? Pi. Okay, I agree. That is the Greek letter uh, that represents pi in the Greek alphabet. What does that mean in now? We don't use it as a letter in now. We might use x or y or something, but we never use pi as a letter because it means something. Yeah? Yeah, it means 3.14, right? It means pi. Well, it means we know it as pi, 3.14. Well, E is just like pi. In this section, we will not use E as a variable. E is a number. And if I go to the calculator, and I press second and the division sign, you can get an E that comes up. And if you hit enter, It'll tell you what it is. Just like if I did pi and I hit enter, it tells me what it is. E is the number 2.718. Most people aren't as familiar with E, uh, but E is, is a number. We'll, 
We'll write that down and move it out. So what I'm what I'm getting at in this problem, if they said round your answer to two decimal places, at first you might look at that and be like, how can I do e to the negative three? And now that you know e is a number, you can raise it to any power you want. And you get about 0 0.05. We're not writing the decimal, that, that wasn't the direction. But that popped up here, so it was a good time for me to start explaining a little about e. That e is a number, 2.718, and it keeps going like that. Um, if you look at it, it looks like it repeats 2.7, and then it repeats 1828, 1828. It doesn't go 1828 again after that. Um, I don't I don't remember what comes after it, but it's it's different. Let's try this. So here's our first equation that they want us to try and solve. Now, there's only one thing we know how to do so far. If we have something that's written in log form, we can change it to y. Yeah. Exponential. exponential. That, that's the only thing that we really know how to do. If something's log, we can make it exponential. All right. Uh, Cameron, what, what's my base here? Two. Two. So if that's a base, that means we're going to have something on it to make it a, a base. We need an exponent. Um, Grady, what's my exponent? X. X. Logarithm always equals the exponent. So 2 to the x equals, and Sam, what are we, what are we looking for now that's going to go on the other side? 16, 16 and that's called the argument. That's the argument. Okay. So, actually, that's the first question I put on the board. 2 to what power gives you 16? Uh, we've already answered it. Uh, what was the answer? 4. 4. So for now, you won't have a number on this side that's not a power of 2. But whatever number this is, that will be a power of it. For now. All right, so in that one, uh, we solved for the variable on the other side. It was on the right. Let's do one more. Log base 5 of 25 equals x. So the directions are not going to tell you how to solve. It's just going to say solve. Find the exact value. You have to know to change that to exponential form. Um, so Fiora, Fiora, can you tell me what that would be if I changed the whole thing to F exponential? F to the power of x equals 25. Uh, sorry, what's my base again? Oh, five. Yeah, five. Two. To the power of x. Power of x, yep. Equals 25. Yep. Okay, so five to what power equals 25? And what would that one be? Five to what power is 25? Two. Two, yep. Some people say five. If you said five, you're thinking five times five. Well, it's not... 5 times something equals 25. It's 5 to something equals 25. So we get x equals 2. Question on that. Okay. Right, let's try this one. So when this is a fraction, uh, we're going to get a certain kind of number as our answer. Let's pretend that it wasn't a fraction. Okay, so this isn't our problem, but it's similar. Okay, on the right, this would mean 3 to what power gives you 27? 
Now, ours is 3 to what power gives you 27 flipped. Does anybody remember what kind of number you need to use as an exponent to cause it to flip? Yeah? Negative. Negative. So if you can figure out the answer to this problem, then the answer to this problem is the same thing, except you make it a negative, so it flips it. Yep? Um, the answer to 127 would be negative 3? Yeah, this one would be negative 3. So we want a 3 here, because 3 to the third power is 27, but we want the 27 flipped, so we have to make the exponent a negative. So anytime you have a fraction where the number you're looking for is in the bottom, make your exponent a negative, and that's how you do it. Any questions on it? So E, we already, we already kind of talked about this. So E is kind of like pi. It's, it's a special symbol. The symbol happens to be a letter in the English alphabet. Pi is a letter in the Greek alphabet. And E stands for the number 2.718. Um, when you have to do a calculation with E, you want to make sure you use the E button on the calculator. If you are using one of my calculators, you can press second and the divided by sign. And that, yeah, that gives you E. Um, if you're using your own calculator that's different, um, you're going to have to figure out where E is. Or if you're showing me, I can, I can probably help So there are two logarithms that have special names. And the special name has to do with something being right there. It's a special base. E is one of those special bases. If you have a log and the base happens to be E, this comes up often enough that they use an abbreviation instead of writing it like that. You'll never see log base E written out. What you're going to see instead of log base E is LN. Lowercase L, lowercase N. And the lowercase L, lowercase N stands for natural logarithm. So if it's natural logarithm, why isn't it NL? Why is it LN? What you have to be careful about when you use this abbreviation, some people forget what the base is. When you write LN, you don't write the base because the LN is like a special abbreviation. So you have to remember that this LN is hiding the base. The base is really E. So LN is a two-letter abbreviation for this four-letter log base E. And I can show you on the calculator how, how that works. Uh, there's two log buttons on the calculator. They're both kind of near the number 7 and 4 on the left. If you press the one that's below, you get an LN symbol. And if I type in, I can pick any number like 8. That's the natural log of the number 8. Now, if I try to type it in like this, log base e of x, there's no button, and it won't let me do it this way unless I do something special. So if I press alpha f2, and then I think it's the fifth option, I can manually force the base to be an e. And what I'm showing you is that if you type in ln8, it means the same thing as log base E8. 
It's just no, nobody types it this way. They always just use L M. Right? That's called a natural logarithm. There's one other logarithm that has a special name. And that's when the base is, oh my god, I mentioned that next. Uh, okay, I'll get to that one next. So, hold that thought, I'll tell you the other special one in a minute. Alright, so let's change this from exponential, or change it to exponential. So let's start with what would go in this box. What's the name of the thing that goes in this box? This is my exponent. This is my base. Now when you write Ln, I told you the base is hidden. What base is Ln hiding? What is it? E. You just have to remember that. It's not written. Ln means base e. Okay, so the base is e. And this is a logarithm, so log, natural logarithm. Logarithm always equals what kind of number? What is it? Yep, logarithm always equals the exponent. And what ends up on the other side by itself? The argument. The argument, which was x. Now the directions didn't say to round that off to two decimal places. It just said change to an exponential expression. Okay, and we've done that. We changed it to something that has an, an exponent. And that's it. If you wanted to figure it out, you could do it out on the calculator, but we're not we're not concerned about that. Right, let's try this. Ln of x equals 12. Notice how I pronounce that. Ln, or some people just say the full word, natural log of x. You don't have to pronounce anything with a base here. The base is always e, so you don't have to say that. Okay, um, can somebody take that whole equation and change it to exponential? Yeah, Maisha? E is my base, logarithm always equals the exponent, and x is the argument. So it's, it's not really math, it's just, just remembering where things move to. Alright, so I told you there were two logarithms with special names. One of them is called natural log, and that's when the base is equal. The other one is called common log, and the common log is when the base is 10. Other than those two, there are no special names. If the base is 8, we just say log base 8. If it's 7, we just say log base 7. There's no special name. That's how you can write a logarithm with a base of 10. You can also write a logarithm with a base of 10 like that. Now, if you look at the second one, what does it look like it's missing? It looks like it's missing the base. And that's okay. You don't have to put the base if you want the base to be a 10. So if the base is not written, then it's always assumed to be a 10. Just like if I put a variable like that. What number is always assumed to be in front of that letter if I don't put a number? A 1. Right? It's the same idea. If we don't put a base here, we assume it's a 10. So most of the time, when you type in a base 10 log, you're not going to be putting the base 10. And that's how the calculator works. If you want to know the log of 40, this is how you type it in. You press the log button. You press 40. And notice it didn't put a base on the log. 
There's no base there. So what base does the calculator think I want to use? It thinks I want 10. And that's what it gave me. I can explicitly force it to be 10. I mean, this is kind of pointless to do it this way. But if I make it so the 10 is actually there, and type in 40, I get the same thing. But that is generally how we would see it. Okay, so two special logs. Natural log, um, what's the base on a natural log? E. e. And common log, what's the base on that? Ten. Ten. Those are the only two that have special names. Alright, let's see if we can see if we can solve this. Okay, so this time the variable is part of the argument. There, there's more in the argument, but the variable is part. We've studied two forms so far today. Exponential form and log form. Which one is that? Log. Yep, that is log form. So the only thing we know how to do with log form is to change it to exponential. And that's how we solve it. So let's see if we can change this to exponential and get our answer. We'll start with the 3. Um, Jenna, what, what's the 3? That's my base. So 3 is my base. Logarithm equals, well in this case it's a 2, and logarithm always equals what kind of number? Logarithm always equals the exponent. So that 2 becomes my exponent. And Tony, what do we call the thing that ends up by itself on the other side? Uh, no, not an expression. It begins with an A. Do you remember what I said, the thing you could do with people that would annoy people, and if you do that all the time, you end up by yourself? Not sure. You want to help them out? Yeah. Argument. The argument. So the argument is going to end up on the right-hand side by itself. Does anybody tell me what, what is my argument in this problem? 4x minus 7. So now, as far as the logarithm part of this problem, that's done. Now you just solve this um, with algebra 1. So what's, what's the first thing you would do in that equation to start to solve it? Yeah, let's do the exponent. What's 3 to the second power? 9. So we have 9 equals 4x minus 7. Uh, Tyler, what would be my next step? Um, would we move the numbers by the x to the x sign? Okay, how would you do that? So, like, if you subtract the number x out of the x sign, are we supposed to see what the x is? Yep, we have to get x by itself. Okay. So, we can't subtract the Four because I don't see a plus four. I'm going to add the seven. Add seven to both sides. That gives me sixteen equals four x. And what's my last step? Yep. D divide by. Yep. Divide by four. Well, I'll do it like this. Divide each side by 4. 16 divided by 4 gives me 4. There you go. So once you change it from log into exponential, then it becomes really algebra 1 to solve. So in that case, we were solving for a variable that was inside the argument. 
So any questions on how we solved for a variable in the argument? Because now I'm going to move the variable to a different spot. Okay. Let's try solving for one where the variable is the base. So now it's in a different spot. It doesn't change the first step. The first step is still still the same. Um, Dominic, what's going to be my first step here? Sorry, did you say that? Uh, so we're trying to change this into. Yeah, we're trying to change it into exponential form. So whatever one you want to get first is fine, but you need, you need the base, you need the argument, and you need what goes on the other side. So can you tell me what this would be in exponential form? It would be x yep. to the second equals 64. Perfect. x to the second equals 64. Okay, so now we got to get x by itself. So how do we get rid of that power of 2? Take the square root. Square and square root cancel each other out. And one, what's the square root of 64? Eight. Eight. There we go. Now, normally when you take a square root, how many how many answers do you get? Like if I asked you the square root of, well, let's do 64. What, what times what is 64? Okay, so 8 times 8 is 64. And negative 8 times negative 8. Well, when we're dealing with logarithms, negative numbers are not allowed in the base, and they're not allowed for the argument. So we don't have to worry about the negative answer. If you try to take a log of a negative number, watch what happens. What kind of answer did it just give you? Imaginary. Gave me an imaginary answer. So we're not we're not dealing with imaginary numbers with logarithms. Okay, so don't ever let the base be negative or let the argument be negative. So the answer there is just eight. Okay. Any questions on that? Alright, so we had one where the variable was in the argument. We did one where the variable was in the base. Now let's do one where the variable is an exponent. This equation is a little different than the last two. What, what format is that equation in? That's exponential. So let's try to do the same idea we did last time. We're going to change it to the other form and then see if we can solve it. So that's exponential. Um, Jackson, what's the name of the other form we use? Logical. Uh, log. Yeah. So we're going to do log form. And I need to write down three things. Can somebody tell me anything I need to do there? Yeah, Tom. Yep, this is the base. So we just want log base e. We're gonna come back to that. But yep, e is the base. Alright, what else? What's the argument? Five. Yep, five is the argument. And logarithm always equals what kind of number? Equals the exponent. So we need to find an exponent. 2x. So 2x equals log base e of 5. Now, there's something written there that I said we're not normally going to write it that way. Can somebody tell me what, what did we write there that isn't really the way you normally write it? Yeah. 
Yeah. A um, little bit more. Right, but what what is going to change to the LN there? The what? The log base E. That entire thing is going to change to LN. So now we have 2x equals LN 5. Okay. Uh, about Fiorella, what do we still have to do to get x alone? Yep, we're going to divide each side by 2. And there is the exact answer to your problem. The ln of 5 divided by 2. If they want us to get a decimal for it, we'll just type it in. Now, tell me which way is right. This way? ln of 5 divided by 2? Or this way? Obviously, it's important which way we do it. The bottom. We don't. If you do the top one, you're really taking the ln of two and a half, right? It's like the ln of two point five. That's different than the ln of five, and then divide that answer by two. It doesn't come out the same. So this is wrong. So anytime you press the ln or you press the log button, it's going to open a parenthesis. When you're done typing in your argument, you need to close it, or it won't come up there. So what is that? Uh, 0 0.805. Any questions on that? Alright, so that's really the uh, the first part on, on logs. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of extra time today to um, start the homework. Um, if you end up finishing it before you leave, you can show it to me and then there's no, um, no homework for tonight. Okay, you will need a calculator. Well, I don't know, maybe you won't need a calculator. But it's on page 473, 10 through 16, 22 to 28, 34 to 38, and 92 to 98. I need to put the folder online right now so you guys can um, access it. So let me, let me do that, and then I'll check in to make sure you guys can, can see what I uploaded.